Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Darkest Dungeon board game. I am continuing my venture through my campaign with my current boss in dungeon level one, being the uh, apprentice necromancer, who we have not made it to yet. We have not reached him yet. We're on quest number two. And I did do a few things wrong. I already know while I was reading my rule book over lunch. Uh, I was supposed to bring uh, <laughs> some firewood. I actually was able to rest and heal uh, some damage and horror from everybody, but unfortunately I did not. And I also did curio room rooms wrong. I was supposed to roll to see if there was a battle in them or not. So I actually potentially battled more than I should have and maybe have spent more resources than I should have. So really both mistakes were actually a net negative. I think I also forgot to do a curio in my curio room that one time. However, we are here. So why don't we dive in and look at the quest that I currently have which is a nice simple one, it's wipe them out. The monsters and holy presence tainted the very opulent halls of the estate, casting dark shadows over its runes. Uh, thus, your orders were quite clear, slay them all. One experience for each lair cleared, and lairs are the combat ones. So notably, Willia Necromancer still has the text where, after battles, remove any non-unholy monsters permanently from the game. Uh, so we did remove a batch of them in the last episode. What the heck? One second. Uh, my, my camera's too big. What the heck? I had the whole previous episode with too big of a camera? Oh no! What a nightmare! It's still too big! Perfect, okay. There we go. Everything is good. Um, so we did actually remove a handful of enemies in the last one. They are now removed from the, the dungeon deck, but there still is, as you can see, a lot of enemies. Uh, our group is still going to be the Bounty Hunter, Crusader, Highwayman, and the Vestal. So notably, the Crusader has about uh, four horror, four stress, five damage. The um, Bounty Hunter is two and two. The Highwayman is zero and five, and the Vestal is two and two as well. So why don't we look at this battle map, this dungeon map, as we uh, get this show on the road. There it is, okay. So here where we are, so, oh, sorry. First, actually, we need to roll our provision die. So we get two per person. And notably, I actually also get one that I bought in the Hamlet when we were there last. So let's, uh, let's rock. All right, let's pull out the, du the dungeon ones. So we got two shovels, a torch, uh, more bandages than I know what to do with. Uh, so I think we're going to make torch. Um, and probably... Probably... Whew. Probably a food. We probably want some, we probably want some stuff that we can eat here. So, and then I also have my firewood. So let's move that all over. Let's move that all over here. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna move up to this first room. So as we know, everyone's, we're not scouting here. We're gonna scout in the next room for sure, but we're not scouting here. There's really no good scouting locations in this one. So we're just gonna start moving up into the next dungeon. So let's uh, roll the dice. Divvy them out. Let's get going. Crusader is, of course, gets double hunger. <laughs> so the Crusader's gonna eat a food and then he's gonna take two damage. Two damage per hero level. The bounty hunter is gonna get a rubble, so we're gonna get rid of a shovel. The highwayman is going to burn a torch. 
But we can also just get one down on the fire. We don't have to spend a torch. We can save those for curios. Uh, and then we also have a hunger, so that's gonna be two damage over here. Okay, not too bad, honestly, not too bad. So let's come back over here, let's see what we got. It is a layer battle. So we get to go to battle mode, baby. My favorite. Let's see what our uh, our room is. It's none other than a beacon of light, which sounds actually pretty nice. <laughs> if I do say so myself. So we are looking for room number five. Five. Okay. So we are here. So notably, the red areas, uh, the corridors are too dark. Heroes ending their turn here suffer one stress. Uh, Beacon of Light, heroes ending their turn here recover one stress. Very interesting. Okay. So we have one here, one here, one there. So we're going to, ooh, this is a... This is a dark area for these guys to be in, for sure. Okay, and now let's see who our enemies are, shall we? Gave this a good shuffle. Our first one is going to be a Bone Rabble. So that's Club Guy, and he is going to be in the front, Unholy Front. So he's holding up over there. We then have another Gun Guy who is definitely going to hold the rear over here. Next up, we got a maggot. Get the little maggots. The maggots hold the front line, so he's just going to hang out on that spot. You'll see all this in a second as well. And then we got a bone arbalist, who is also going to be in the back. A little spooky. Mind you, it's a little bit spooky. Okay. So you can see uh, Maggot, so Bone Rabble, Maggot, Arbalist, and we got the Fusilier over there. So those are all of our enemies that we're starting with. And we do got a pretty, pretty chunk of damage on us. So let's shuffle up the deck. Get the initiative deck all shuffled. And then let's like try to build a plan here. So we do have some leveled up skills, which are notably really nice. The only problem, honestly, I'm a little bit worried about the Highwayman, because he's going to need to get some healing from the Vestal sooner rather than later. He has only 7 health left compared to the Crusader's 12, sorry, um, 10 health left. Okay, let's see the first action, which is going to be one of us. It's going to be the Crusader. So the Crusader is going to definitely move up here. Um, and then I think we're going to do an Inspiring Cry. So that's going to heal us one. Remove one stress. Oh, sorry. Actually, we're going to do this twice. We're going to do... So we're going to change the order. So we're actually going to... Um, do the Inspiring Cry first, because I forgot I leveled this up. So that's going to heal one and reduce the stress for me, and it's going to heal one on the Highwayman. And then it's also going to put our Torch up to full. And then we move up here, and then we end a turn, and we gain a stress. So we basically went stress negative, sorry, stress uh, neutral there, which is pretty all right. All right, next up, it's going to be the Bounty Hunter. Okay, how do we want to do things here? Well, we definitely want to get out of the hellscape. So we're going to move one. And I think we're going to move two. And then I think we're just going to attack the maggots at six. We actually have 11. So we have to roll a, a 11 or lower. We're just going to finish him. We hit. So the maggots actually take six and the maggots will die, which is super awesome because now they're off the board. Just like in the game, they're squishy as all hell. And then these guys move forward. Which is actually also good, because now we've put the Arbalist out of position. You love to see it. Okay. Who's next? Oh, it's all of us. All right. So I think we're going to move 
Hmm. How do we do this? I think we do move one and two. I think we do bring the highwayman into the fray. It does make it so that we also take a damage because we did move because of our lethargy. Uh, lethargy. Let me just see if it's per move or just any time you move. I believe it's any time you spend a movement point. No, it's just when they use a move action. Okay, that's 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 a lot more manageable. So actually, no, what we do first, before we move, so we're still at four, we're gonna shoot a pistol shot at this guy. So we hit him on a 10 or lower for seven damage, which also actually kills him. So we just need to roll a 10 or lower. We rolled a two, which is unfortunately not a crit because it's a one for us, but this guy will die. And that's gonna actually throw both of these guys out of position, which is really nice. And this guy is gonna live to fight another day because he is unholy. And then we move to take the damage, take a stress, because we are in a corridor of darkness. All right. The Arbalist, so this guy's gonna go. He is in that position, so he's gonna do a bayonet jab. So he is going to attack the closest, which is gonna be the him, and he's going to attack him for, he needs to roll a six or lower to hit here. He hit a three, so we're gonna take three damage over here, one, two, three. And then he actually is gonna push himself back on the, turn order. He's just desperately trying to bayonet jab his way out of this. Alright, who's next? It's gonna be the fus the Fusilier. He is in the front, so he's gonna do a rust rushed shot. So basically these guys are gonna just keep um, pushing him, they're gonna keep pushing themselves back. So closest of one, so it's gonna attack him. He's going to attack, he needs to roll a four or lower. He missed, so he just stays there. That's great news. This now goes to the Vestal, who's gonna move here, and then we're gonna do Divine Grace targeting our good friend, the, the Highwayman. So we wanna hit a three or lower. We hit a 10, which still does heal for three. Nice. Uh, and then the last two are enemies that cannot act, so then we go to round two. I love the combat system. This is actually really fun. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. All right, let's see who's first. It's gonna be the Fusilier. He's gonna once again shoot the Bounty Hunter. He needs a four or lower. Cause it's plus one dodge and then we already have one built in. He misses again, you love to see it. This is why it's nice, both in the game, in the video game, and now apparently the board game, you wanna throw these enemies out of position. We then go to the Crusader, who's gonna just move one, and then we're gonna use the Inspiring Cry again. So we're gonna heal a stress, heal a damage, heal a damage, <laughs> heal a stress. And then he's gonna gain that stress back. So once again, we're kinda just, we're kinda just stress neutral over there. We then go to the Bounty Hunter, who I'm pretty sure we wanna throw right into this fight, right? Is this guy immune to stun? He's not. So we can move in here, and then let's uppercut the bastard, right? So we need to roll an eight or lower. Sorry, we actually have 11. We need to roll a 10 or lower. We hit a three, not enough to crit, but we do hit this guy for three. And we stun him. And we push him back. Which is awesome. Okay. Good hit. And then because we enter in there, we actually recover a stress. Who's next? It's the Highwayman. So the Highwayman does need to get out of here. So he's going to take a damage to move over here. We actually have a range of two, so we're actually gonna move there, I think. And then we're gonna take our shot, which we're gonna do a pistol shot at this guy, I think. 
Because if it crits, we, if it crits, we we kill him. So we get to attack him for. We need to roll a ten. If we roll a one, we kill him. We roll a two, which is mighty close to a one, but not close enough, and we're gonna deal seven damage to that guy with a successful pistol shot two. So that's awesome. Next card here is this guy, who is going to bayonet jab him, the crusader. Um, so it's gonna be, he needs a seven or lower. Why am I using, I have a die here, seven or lower. We rolled a three, not enough to crit, so he's gonna take three. And then he pushes himself back. Okay. Does he move away? Let's find out. Yeah, he does move back here. Okay. That's okay. I messed that up once, but we'll just we'll just run with it. Okay, we now go over here, which is going to be the Vestal who needs to heal. So she has 4 of 12, he has 5 of 12, we have 8 of 17. So it's got to be the Highwayman again. We're going to target the Highwayman. Is that a crit? That is a crit. So the Highwayman's going to lose a stress. He's already at full, but he does heal all 5, which is great. That's awesome. And then I think we're going to blinding light this guy who's with us. We have to be a range of one, so we actually can't do that. But we can drop a judgment on him. If we attack, we need to hit a nine. Does he? this guy have any dodge? He does. So we have to hit an eight or lower. We hit a four, which is not a critical, but we do deal four damage to this guy, which is not enough to kill him. So he'll go up to seven. He has one health remaining. But we also healed for two on the Vestal due to the text on Judgment, so that's great. And now we're going into round three. Just checking again to make sure I'm not missing something at round end. <laughs> you never know. No, that's all, that's all we do. That's all we do. Okay. And sleeves for these guys. All right, we're on round three. I would love to get a heal on the Crusader. So let's see what happens. First card is going to be the Crusader. So the Crusader is going to move in here. And I think I'm going to do an inspiring cry. Because that's going to heal the Vestal for one, remove a stress. It's going to heal me, for the, the Crusader for one, and heal the stress. And now we are, we're back at seven. So that's a very comfortable amount. Next card here is the Bounty Hunter. And I think we want the Bounty Hunter to actually finish off this guy. So the Bounty Hunter is going to move here. And then we're going to do uh, a finish him. So we're going to attack this guy for 11. And he is done. The reason I'm killing him first is because he actually... Oh, is he dead? Seven plus six is 13. Yeah, this guy's dead. The reason we're attacking him is because he's actually acting this turn and the other guy isn't. And the hope is that we'll be able to kill him next turn and not have to redo this battle again. <laughs> That's the hope, fingers crossed anyways. All right. This guy's stunned, so he doesn't go. Like, I'm going to try to kill him with the Vestal, I think. Another enemy. There's no enemies remaining. So we're clear. We go the Highwayman, who I think is going to... Oh, is there a treasure chest somewhere? There's one over here. I always forget about that. Okay. That's the only treasure chest. Well, I guess we're going to go grab that treasure chest. So there should be a treasure chest in here. Not two, just one. Okay, so let's, uh, we're going to move two, one, two, so we will take a damage. Um, and then we're going to open the treasure chest, which is, ooh, roll a die. 
and get double the amount of gold. So let's roll. 12 gold is really nice. You'll love to see it. Okay. Then we go to the Vestal, who is going to heal the Crusader. Divine Grace is zero. So we're looking for a 12 or less, a crit on a three or less. Six is enough to heal three, which puts them to a much more comfortable three. And then we're gonna try to do uh, judgment. So this guy's two away, our range is two. We need a eight or lower. Okay, we miss. Luckily, we have a whole final round yet. We didn't put all of our eggs into that one basket. Because boy, would that have been embarrassing. <laughs> would that have been pretty bad, bad, not good. Now let's see who's first. It's him. So he's in the front, so he's going to do a rush shot. Closest is the bounty hunter. He's going to attack him for uh, four. Four or less. He misses. All right. We're then going to go to us. With the Crusader. Who, so, I mean, like, I don't think there's a reason for me not to just heal. Because, I mean, like, he's not our primary damage dealer. The Bounty Hunter is going to get his shot. The Bounty Hunter is attacking with an 11. He just needs to roll a 10 or lower, so it's actually impossible for us to miss with the Bounty Hunter. And then we get to lower the stresses, which is very nice. Okay, things are looking pretty good. We healed up a lot during this battle. The Vessel has no damage, Highwayman is one, Bounty Hunter is two, Crusader has two, so our tanks have the damage on them and the other guys not so much. Stress is also looking really comfortable here, so this was, I would say, a very successful battle. The Bounty Hunter is going to try to finish him at a range of one, uh, and we're going to attack. We need to roll a ten or lower. It's a four, so this guy is dead. And he is also going to be removed because he is not unholy. All right, so we call that a successful battle. This leaves, this is gonna come up over here. And then I am gonna spend a stress on everybody's behalf to scout. We have a battle, we have a battle. So we actually have the two battles we need. We're very close to them, which is really lucky because then we can just go get those. <laughs> and not have to worry. All right, well, let's clean up this uh, area and get this show on the road. So I suppose we're gonna use a rest, our firewood after that then, right? That would be the time to do it. Okay. All right, so we scouted. So everyone only needs to roll one dice here. Crusader is hungry. <laughs> you know, we rolled no, we rolled like no hunger last time. We have no food. We're gonna roll all of our hunger here. That is rubble, so we can clear it with a, sh a s shovel. Over here, we have a trap. So this is going to attack for six. It needs to roll a six or lower. It does hit, so it's going to be two damage on the highwayman. <laughs> Trap sprung. You know the, you know the. If you play Darkest Dungeon, you know it. And then finally for the Vestal, nothing. All right. So we enter this top room, and let's see what our room type is going to be. <sighs> the old abbey so that is number nine here's ending their turn here suffer plus one per negative quirk and heal one per positive quirk well we have only the vestal has a negative quirk no one has positive quirks so we're looking for nine Nine. Okay. 
Ooh, what an interesting battle map. All right, so he is here along with the highwayman. And then the other two are up here. Very interesting. Oh, that's six. <laughs> that's six. I was like, what's this A, B shit? That is actually six. Okay, let's grab a different one. Let's actually grab the proper one. There we go. There's no green. Oh, no, no, it's the same one. It's all just on red. Okay, there we go. So everybody's here. Everybody starts here. Okay, shall we see who our bad guys are? Oh, we have two treasure chests as well. Two. Okay. Let's see. I gotta reshuffle these guys in. But I imagine we're gonna see a lot more. We're gonna see a lot of skelly men, I think. We're gonna see a good chunk of Skelly Man to come here to quote unquote ruin our... Ugh! Speaking of ruining your day, that's what I get for trying to talk and shuffle at the exact same time. All right, don't move your wheelie chair, Justin. Can I pause? Okay, I'm here. Let's see who we got. First one. Hey, the Bone Rabble's back, baby. So he is gonna be on our front line. I like him, he only has six HP, he is very weak. We then have a bone arbalist. Okay, we're in we're in bone country. And he's definitely gonna be in the support class, sports slot. We have hey, alright, we're definitely in in bone country. And then we have a cultist brawler. Okay, so we're gonna remove another one of these guys. But the battle map looks kind of spicy. Look at that stuff. This seems really fun. Okay. Got my dice. Got my initiative deck. Let's shuffle it all in. And let's have some fun. It is interesting, I really like to see how this game works. Cause like, it doesn't have the traditional, like, what we know, um, like what we know Darkest Dungeon to have, right? Uh, where it's like the battle system, but it still has the same kind of like flavor of the, like the back lines in the back and they don't get targeted as much as the front line. I think it's really cool. All right, first one is gonna be us, the Crusader. So I think we just like dive in, right? So the Crusader moves in here and then we attack the Bone Rabble and just take take one of their attacks off the board, right? So we're gonna do the Smite. We need to roll a nine or lower. We did roll the nine, so this guy will die. And we'll just get rid of him. So that's nice. So it takes one of them off the board and kind of brings the whole guys kind of a little bit more out of skew. Okay. All right, who's next? It's gonna be the cultist brawler. So this guy is in the front position, so he's gonna do Ren for the old gods. Closest, so he can move here. We can just move him right into the, the rabble. We're gonna choose where he moves <laughs> as the targeted player. Uh, and then he needs a seven or lower to hit. That is a six, so that will hit. So we're gonna take three damage, which is gonna put us up to seven. Uh, we're gonna get plus one stress, which I think is only fair. We're gonna bleed one for three turns. And then we're gonna get a bu negative buff for two turns. All right. Who's next? It is gonna be the Bone Courtier. So he is uh, in the def defense, so we're gonna roll. He rolled a five, so he's gonna attempt in Goblet. Most stressed. Three, two, yeah, so it's gonna be this guy. He actually doesn't even need to move forward. He can just throw the Goblet at him. So he needs an accuracy of 
Nine. So he needs to roll a nine or lower. Sorry, the buff. Sorry, the, the debuff. Nine or lower, he crits on a one. Five. So it's going to put our stress up by one. And we're going to take three damage. All right. Next up is the last enemy, the Arbalist. So he is in that position, so he's just gonna go marked the furthest. So he's gonna attack the Bounty Hunter. He can move here to do it. So he's going to attack the Bounty Hunter. He needs to hit with on seven. He does hit. So that's gonna be five damage. Whoo, that's a painful hit, holy cow. All right, but now we know that it's going to be us for the rest. So, um, I think I might have missed a hunger. No, the hunger he rolled nothing. I think he didn't roll anything. I think I might have missed my tapeworm though. All right, so what we're gonna do? I think we're gonna mark. We're gonna do marked for death against this guy. And so we need to roll an 11. Does he have dodge? No. An 11 or lower. We rolled a 10. So we are gonna deal three damage to him. Oh no, sorry, that one does no damage. We're gonna buff ourselves for two, sorry. So we need to roll a 12 or lower, which is very easy to do. So we're going to buff ourself. We're going to lower him. Debuff him. Um, and then we're going to mark him for three. And then we're going to do an uppercut. So now we need to roll an 11 or lower. Oh, well, that's a crit. So that lowers everybody's in this area's stress by one. Um, we're going to deal him three damage. It's a crit because of the debuff. And then we're going to push this guy in here, but we're also going to push him back there, which is super cool. Now the Bone Courtier is out of position. He's going to do a knife in the dark, which is awesome. All right, next up is the Highwayman. So the Highwayman is going to take a shot at this guy. So we have a pistol shot. We need to roll a 10 or lower. That's a six. We actually deal 10 damage because he's marked, which is conveniently enough to just send this guy, send this guy to hell. And he actually will once again, because he's not unholy, he's just a guy, he's gonna get removed. And then we bring the last one up. Okay, uh, we have another shot. I think what we do, this guy's gone, sorry. Um, I think what we do is I think we go one, two. We come up over here. Yes. Sorry. That's him. One, two. Which is going to deal us a damage, of course. Uh, and then we have the Vestal, whose turn is going to be pretty simple, I think. She's going to heal the Crusader. We need a 12 or lower. A six is good to remove three damage. And then we're going to do a judgment. So one, two, we can hit him and we can attack for... Interesting. Do we move? Do we actually just move into here? We'll take one damage and we take one stress per negative quirk. I think that's okay. I think we do want to move her into the fight, and there's no last enemy for us to do there. All right, that was a really good round one. I'm at that point where I need to check, I'm suddenly like, yeah, no, but you're gonna do two actions on your turn. And they can be the same action, but they can't be the same skill. <laughs> Just wanna check and make sure. It does feel Two actions during the turn. You can perform the same action twice they like. Skill, however skills you successfully. It, it, if we didn't miss, oh, you can do it again if you failed, if you miss with the target. 
Okay. Okay. Easy. All right, I definitely want to grab some loot. It's the Crusader, baby. So the Crusader, I think, is going to move into here, and we're going to do a stunning blow against this guy. We need to roll an 8 or higher. We can do that. Oopsie! Just threw it off the table. All right, we can do an 8 or higher. No problem. Oh, is that a crit? Oh, we do take one damage from the bleed. Is that a crit? No, it is not a crit. Um, but we do get to deal four damage to this guy. And he's going to be stunned. You got to love the stun. All right, who's next? The bounty hunter. So we lose a buff, which just gives us plus one crit. Okay. One, two. And I guess I'm just going to mark this guy. Mark for death him. We need to roll a 10 or lower. We're good. So we're just going to put three mark on the guy and debuff him. All right, who's next? It's the Highwayman. So the Highwayman's going to shoot this guy with a pistol shot. So we get plus one accuracy. So our accuracy is 13 minus one from their dodge. So we need to roll a 10 or lower, which we did. And we deal 10 damage, and he is no more. Just get that punk out of here, right? Just get him gone. And now we actually can, like, just quickly... We can heal... We can grab some loot. It is very nice. So this guy is just going to lose his stun. And then we go to the Vestal, who is definitely going to move in here. And then we're going to heal up. Once again, I think it's going to be the Crusader. Give me a crit on this. I got a crit on this, so that actually lowers his... his... So that loader lowers the Bounty Hunter, the Vestals, and the Crusader Sanity, because we rolled a crit. And then, we, let me just look at that again. It's the target and everyone in the targeted area, right? When a, a hero causes a critical, that hero and all their heroes in the same area. Oh, okay, in the same area as the hero, recover one stress. Likewise, it works the same for when, but the opposite. Like, we, we gain stress if an enemy gets a critical hit. Um... But then we get to remove five from him, which is, once again, a very comfortable number. Okay, and then this guy, there's no one else left. It's just him. Okay, so we go to round three. Oh, the Highwayman didn't do a second action. He wanted to move in there, for sure, because we only shot. We want, to, we want to get the treasure chest. Money and gold is very valuable. Who would have, who would have thought, right? Who would have thought? Up first is going to be the Crusader, who I think... We're in round three. Oh, and then uh, the Vestal gains one stress. I think the Crusader is going to move in here and we're going to loot. We got to roll the Provision die. It's more bandages, baby. <laughs> Oh, we take a damage at the start of our turn from our own bandages, from our own bleeding. Perfect. I would have preferred um, money, but I'll take that. And then we go to the bounty hunter, who I think is going to uppercut this guy. So we have an 11. We don't crit, but we do deal 3 damage, so that's going to put this guy to 7 damage. Um, hmm. 
And I mean, it does stun him as well. It does stun him. And then it pushes him, but we just like, well, push him into here. One, two, we push him back over there. All right, and then I'm gonna mark him. He is marked. And the debuff. So uh, we could try to heal the bounty hunter, but I just don't think it's worth it. I think we're just gonna let this go and try to end it here with the highwayman. So we're gonna grab this, which is just gonna be, we gotta choose one of these. I think I'm gonna grab food. That's what that treasure is. Once again, I would have loved gold, but what can you do? And then we're gonna shoot this guy with our pistol shot. We, had a, we have a 10. We need to roll a nine or lower. We hit with a seven, which is 10 damage, which is enough to send this guy into the stratosphere. Okay. Definitely ain't upset with how that went. That went, that was a very, very smooth combat. Did make it a bit easier that we didn't have, um, we didn't have to deal with, only the Vestal had to deal with the location. That does make it quite a bit easier. And we cleared this out. So then we can backtrack. So we're gonna just each take a stress due to the rules of backtracking. And then we're gonna venture into here, which means we gotta roll a bunch of dice. Two per person. Get the dice all ready up. Now right, let's start with the Crusader. Let's see what's gonna happen to him. We rolled a food, which we have, and a rubble. So we're gonna take one damage which is going to put us at five, and then we suffer one stress. Food has been spent. Okay. We now go to the bounty hunter, who... I want to get a curio. Because you can get money from them, and I want more money. We'll do the trap first. So we, they need to roll six or higher, six or lower, sorry. They rolled a one, so that's actually a crit. So then we will take a stress, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, I had to use that. Uh, I, I messed up this, uh, my weakness. Sorry, my, my trinket over here. That's on me, that's on me. Um, and then we have to, I mean, we can just bring a torch down, right? Consume a torch or gain plus two stress or minus one torch. Okay. All right, highwayman. We have a trap. So this guy's going to roll seven or lower. He is going to take two damage. Which is going to put him at six damage. And then there's Rubble, so he's going to take one damage and gain a stress. And then we finally have the Vestal. Can you please get a Curio? Nah, of course we just get uh, two damage. So it's going to be three damage and a stress. Okay. No curios today, no curios, but we do step into this other combat room and we actually have no curio rooms in our thing. So once we're done this combat room, we can pretty much leave. Um, but we also can just rest after we clear this room, which we are gonna do because I, I wanna use those points that we got. So let's see what our room is, shall we? We got the great black expanse that is the close up camera. <laughs> Calm down. We have Ritual Chamber. So this is number one. 
corner. Heroes here suffer uh, one stress at the end of their turn. So we're looking for number one, baby. There's number one, baby. All right, let's see that map on this one. Get out of here. No one likes you. Ooh, interesting. I love the layout of this one. All right, let's start with the treasure chest because I always forget those. Just give me these. Give those a shuffle. Oh, we start with the treasure chest on each of our things. That's kind of sick. Jesus, these are so hard to shuffle. Let's go one there and one there. Okay, so we can just grab a treasure chest. I'm definitely gonna. Don't like how far away the Vestal is from her friends, but I suppose that is life, huh? Okay. So heroes entering the turn here suffer one stress. Honestly, that's pretty mild compared to that one where uh, the invocation chamber or whatever it was, <laughs> that was pretty spooky. We do have notably a good chunk of damage on all of our heroes. So we gotta get, the Vestal's gotta get working when she's not picking up treasure during her turn. <laughs> I gotta get those treasure tokens, man. I want the gold, baby. All right, let's see what we got. First one, the Bone Arbalist is back. Now, no, notably there is three of each of these, so we're probably not seeing the exact same Bone Arbalist each time, but it could be. Next up is a Pliskin, a snake. I've never actually, maybe I'm showing how little I've played the game, but I actually don't recall that one in the game. He does Blight though, which is kind of spooky. We then have a madman. I hate the madman. Oh, and he's even right here. Oh my god. So he's in the back. I love this spawning system. It is incredibly elegant. So much so I gotta steal it for a game I've been designing. And then we got a bone defender who is a pretty tough enemy. And he goes here. Icarumba? That's spooky. One second. Okay, so here's our battle arena for this one. Sorry? Did I not put my did I not put the bone guy in? Bone defender. Let's just grab another one then. I guess I just did when I stood up to check something, it I didn't put him in. Okay. Alright. Is this where we're gonna learn that greed is good? <laughs> And we're just going to grab the hell out of this treasure. And potentially throw us in for a loop. Alright, so we have Blight. The Madman just does a bunch of stress damage. Pliskin does Blight. Bone Defender is just going to be tough to get through. Alright, let's see who's first. It's going to be the Pliskin. So this guy is in one, two, so he's going to do... He's going to, he's going to do two, which is infused. Closest. So he's going to go one, two. And he's going to attack this guy. He needs to roll a ten or lower. He rolled a three. It's not a critical. But we do take four damage, which is admittedly a little bit spooky. And we get two Blight for three turns. Which I think I'm going to just use the potion to just like clear out. Okay, who's next? Here's the initiative cards. It's going to be the next enemy, so it's going to be the Bone Defender. So this guy's going to roll. He's going to do number two, which is dead weight closest. So he's going to go again for the front line. Oh, literally these guys actually can't enter. Sorry, because these are only two spaces. So we have to go back in time a bit. So 
So he just like moves in there. So then we actually are going to get that potion back. Maybe I'm doing these movements wrong, but I'll kind of study those when I get through. So we get four damage back because he can't actually move into that space. Because uh, in Thai, you go by priority for attacks. So then this guy, he is doing the dead weight, but he also can't move in, so he just stops there. Okay. So we're kind of lucky because we're quartered. Oh my god. The madman's going. All right. So this guy is going to roll. He always rolls. And he rolled a five, so he's going to do doomsday. So he's going to move here, and he's going to do this. So he just needs a ten or less because our dodge does not go up. Uh, so notably, he hits the Vestal, but not the Highwayman, and her stress goes up by one. Okay. All right, Crusader, it's your time to shine. I think you're going to need to fight... You're going to go into the unholy area, I'm pretty sure. Because then the Vestal can, like, maybe start making her way towards you. She actually can heal you this turn. Okay, but you don't need it as much as others. But we are going to do a smite, because we do get plus one damage versus unholy. And I think we're going to go for the Arbalist. Try to get the damage down. Because you want to deal the damage, you don't want to kill the tanks. You want to kill the damage, the other ones. So we're going to attack. And we have um, an accuracy of eight. We miss! Let's go! That's great. That's awesome. The chickens come home to roost? Maybe. The Arbalist is going to go. He is going to do one, so he's going to marked and furthest, so he's going to move one, two, or the furthest, which is going to be you. So he can move here and he can attack the bounty hunter. He has a, a six, sorry, seven. He misses. All right, so good. We, uh, we missed, they missed. But now it's finally our turn to start doing some stuff. So I think what we do as the bounty hunter is we loot the treasure. <laughs> oh, okay, so I can either, I'm gonna roll this and that got times two. Oh, 20 gold? Don't mind if I do, that's an upgraded building. That's an upgraded building, brother. All right, and then we're gonna attack. Hmm. So we need a 7 or higher, so it's a 70% chance of hitting, 30% chance of missing. Let's go for it. We're going to try to finish him on this guy. We hit. So he's going to take 6 damage. All right, and now we go to the Highwayman, who is our sexy, sexy damage dealer. So what I'm pretty sure we want to do is we want to try to kill this snake, I think. So we're going to do a tracking shot. So we're going to attack this guy. We need to hit a 9 or greater. We miss. All right, so we're going to do a pistol shot. We hit the pistol shot, so we're going to deal seven damage to this guy, which is a good chunk of damage. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, sometimes you feast, sometimes you famine, and right now we're famining a little bit. All right, so then we go to the Vestal. And the Vestal's turn, I think, is going to be pretty simple. We're going to do a dazzling light against this guy. So we need to roll seven or higher. We missed. Let's go. Um, and then I think we do I think we do a judgment so we need to roll a seven or higher on you oh no have the chickens come home to roost all we do is deal damage so now when we're not dealing damage it's kind of like uh oh all right but hopefully we get to go first I want to make sure they're all facing the right way. Otherwise, I can use that information to my advantage. All right, give me, give me the first action, please. I would love to do something with this Crusader. 
I can maybe kill something. It's me, okay, it's me. All right, what do we do here? So this guy has four health remaining. Do we have anything that can do something with four health? We could also move in here and try to get this guy out. I also could do an inspiring cry to get our... Okay, so what we do is I think we do a stunning blow against this guy. So we need to roll a nine or lower. Nice. We don't crit, but we do deal four damage. And we stun him. So we basically take one off the table, which is kind of like what we want to be doing. He only takes two because of his protection. And then we do an inspiring cry. So we're going to heal ourselves for one. Lower our stress, but we're also putting the torch up. So now we have plus one dodge during our turns. Very nice. Very good. You love to see it. All right, who's next? Ooh, it's the bounty hunter. Okay, what can we do here? We can move two and attack that guy. We attack for eight. If we crit, we deal 12. It's not great. Oh, we can mark for death this guy. I think we try to take him out. We're going to mark this punk for death. We need to roll an 8 or a lower. We did. So he is going to be marked. And we're going to put some... a debuff on him. And then I'm going to finish him, which is a range of one, zero to one. So he has seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry, seven. Yeah, so we just go like this. With the, with the accuracy from the marked, we go ten. So we just, we just kill this guy. He is defeated. All right. Get that madman out of here. I know he doesn't deal damage, and right now things are looking a bit worse for wear on the damage. But I am just happy to remove um, one of their actions from the board, right? Like, that's important. Because now they're only doing two actions, where last round they did four. All right, who's next? It's going to be the Pliskin. Who is going to do Infuse? So he's just going to move in here and attack. He needs to roll an eight or lower. That doesn't crit. But it does deal four damage. Oh no. <laughs> the highwayman has one life left. He's gonna go to uh, death's door right away. He does get the blight, but we can spend the potion so the blight won't happen. Okay. Okay, a little bit spooky. Who's next? The Highwayman. How much health does this guy have left? He has two health left. Okay. So I could try a Grape Shot Blast against him. We need to roll an eight or lower. Seven or lower. Yeah, I'll try it. Let's go. This guy's dead. He'll take three damage, which is enough to kill him. And we move these guys up. And then this guy's also going to be gone. Because that snake, I'm pretty sure, is not unholy. No, he's just a beast, baby. He's a beast! Uh, and then we're looting the chest. Oh, another gold one. All right, let's go. Roll times two. Ten gold? I'll take it. Don't think I won't. I want the gold, baby. Greed is good. Okay, who's next? This guy who's going to be stunned. And then we got the Vestal. Okay, how do we do this? So I'm pretty sure we want the Vestal to start making her way towards the Highwayman. So she's going to move here. Oh, I guess, sorry, there's been um, stress up. Stress up twice. Stress up once. Because they've been in the... They've been cornered. They've been cornered. I've just been missing those moments, but luckily we're going to get them here. Okay. Um, so now we're going to do... 
the Dazzling Light. We're going to try to stun this guy. So we need to roll. No, this is still down. We need to roll an eight or lower. Three is good. It's not a crit, but it is very good. So we're going to deal two damage to this guy. And baby, we're stunning him. And we put the torch up. Awesome. Okay. Then this guy's going to have his, but he's just going to lose his stun. The last one's gone. Okay, so I feel like we're going into round three. I feel like we have um, stabilized a lot better, but I would still like to get some healing down. Especially for our good friend, the Highwayman. Because <laughs> he's looking a little bit worse for wear, mind you. All right, round three. Who's going first? It's none other than the Crusader. Well, the Crusader has got to fight this guy. So we're going to do a smite because he's the, he has the best damage output against him. So we need to roll a nine or less. Ooh, that's not a crit. It's a one, but it's not a crit. So we deal four damage to him. So that means that this guy now goes to six. He has four health remaining. Uh, that was our first attack. I mean, I guess we try to stun him again, right? A stunning blow. Nice. So he'll take two damage. And we're stunning the, we're stunning the MF'er. He came to the wrong arena. All right, Bounty Hunter, what do you got going on? Bounty Hunter could go like one, two, and then attack this guy. Do a finish him. It doesn't kill him. Is it better for him to just come in? No, we can do that next turn. No, nah, but then we, ah, nah, we'll just attack. Uh, I think I am going to make this, so we need to roll a seven. I want to get my warrior's cap back. We do miss. That's okay. Then we go to the high women. So the high women is going to move in here. And I think he's going to take a shot against this guy. So we need to roll a nine or lower. We roll a five, so that's a hit. And we deal seven damage to this guy. Which is not enough to kill him, but it's getting mighty close. If we get the Vestal, we might be able to. So he's this. Uh, the defender is going to lose his stun, and then the Vestal is going to start by healing the Highwayman. So we need a uh, twelve or lower. That's a one, baby. So she's going to get her uh, stress, and she's going to heal him for five, which is huge. That's huge. And then I think we're going to do. Um, a judgment against this guy. So we need to roll an eight or lower. We rolled a five. We're gonna heal two and deal two to this guy, which does finish him off. You love to see it. You love to see it. He is gone. Um, but that will be round end and we go into the final round. Cause that one's just a guy. Okay. So what's on our wish list here? Some stress reduction and maybe some healing, but we gotta we gotta finish this off. This guy needs to take two more three more damage. He's going first, by the way. Alright. So he's in the front, so he's gonna roll. He rolled a two, so he's going to do Axe Blade against the Crusader. So he has to roll a seven or lower. He misses. All right, that's great. That's great news. I miss. He misses. We all miss for ice cream. Okay, we're going to do an Inspiring Cry. So we're going to lower our. We're going to lower the stress of our target, which is you, and heal you. And then we're going to lower our stress and heal us. And then. We're gonna we're gonna smite him. We need to roll a nine or lower. We did. He's dead because he takes eight. Da he takes four damage. So that man is no more. All right, that's the end of combat, and we actually got another one of these. So we have all of the three layer tokens, which is we're at convenient places. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disrespect the luck we have here. That was very lucky. 
And then... Uh, I mean, I am going to spend my firewood, right? We're going to spend it. And that means I have now 12 points that I can divvy up between health and sanity. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because then we can also spend bandages to heal as well. So we can remove like two from you to put you to four. And we can remove one from you to put you to four as well. Oh, we have another bandage, so we can remove another one from you. And then we can go back to town. We can leave the dungeon. Because I'm pretty sure I can leave the dungeon at any time when I'm done my quest. Hmm. All right, so then we get three XP. We get three XP. Three XP per hero. That's awesome. So we actually are able to level up some heroes, which I think would be fun. But I also want to look at the... Um, should be a five. We should go there. Okay. I love it. I love it. All right. So we'll just put all these guys back. I'm not, I'll tell you, this is a game like Gloomhaven that I just get stressed when it's on the table. There's a lot of loose bits around. Okay. So. We now get to go into town. doesn't work nearly as well <laughs> but let's see what our uh, Hamlet event is today I am in a mulligan if I get the um, if I get the gypsy one again I just think so oh god Am I going to remember to do that? Yeah, I'll write a note. Anyway, we roll two less uh, quest dice, but we have four days to spend here. We have four days uh, in the next Hamlet phase because uh, everyone was expecting the goods to arrive intact, uh, but all they got was news of misfortune and loss. So we have four days to do things. Let's start by seeing where our good friend, the caretaker, is going to go. Also, let's look at some upgraded buildings, because we do have a lot of money. I have $48. Okay, what is it like? So they upgraded sanitarium, heal seven for one. Holy cow. Don't know. Oh, that's level. No, that is level two. Tavern level two heals three stress for one, as opposed to three stress for one. Oh, but you also can heal 9 for 9. Stagecoach is add another waiting token. Blacksmith, use one of your skills as level 3 form for the next quest and gain... Oh, okay, that's pretty good. You also gain a, a provision die. Nomad Megan, reveal one trinket and one level 2 trinket and one level 3 trinket. Blacksmith 2, use one of your... So use one of your skills as a level 3 form. Level 3 Sanitarium we don't care about. Oh, good God. Level 2 Nomad Wagon is a is level 2 Trinkets, okay. Survivalist, you can gain a more. Tavern 3, we don't have. Survivalist 3, we don't have. The Abbey 2, remove a quirk. 
Gain one positive quirk. Interesting. Where do we remove diseases? At the sanitarium, right? It's still just two. I don't think we're that worried about healing yet. I mean, like, healing the amount that we have there. And some of them cost 10, but everyone else costs 20. The blacksmith and the nomad are each 10. I think I kind of like the blacksmith. We are going up against the... I think I am going to upgrade the blacksmith. So we just put that over the blacksmith. Just like there. Um, so that'll cost me 10 of my gold. But the thing, the reason why I'm doing that is because we are going up against the boss for the next one. So I think we'd rather have our skills generally just be better, right? Because we are going up against the first one where <laughs> it's going to be pretty tough. Like we're at, a, we're at a campaign ending point, essentially, what it's coming down to. Okay, let's see where the caretaker is going to be. 10, so he's in the Nomad Wagon. All right, so he's just covering that up. Okay, Crusader, you, my friend, I think are just gonna go to the blacksmith. How much, you need to heal three? You also go to the sanitary, I mean, we have a lot of time, so I think we are gonna go to the blacksmith. We're gonna just pay one. I think I want every one of them to go to the blacksmith. And then I gotta use one of mine at level three. <sighs> Maybe smite? Is the black, is the, he unholy? It doesn't say on this. But I'm going to wager he's unholy. So I think we're going to do smite three for this next one. Just for this next one. So that's temporary. So let me just put that on top so I'll remember that. Okay. Good job, brother. We're all proud of you. Give me all of these because I'm going to... I'm gonna need them all. So the upgrade now, it's Unholy gets plus. So this deals a 14 damage against Unholies, which is a huge number. It's a huge number. All right, Bounty Hunter. You gotta get rid of one of your diseases. We gotta get rid of some diseases here. So why don't you just go to the sanitarium, pay two of our cash, cash in this five, and let's remove that tapeworm from you. <laughs> Let's just suck that fucker right out of you. Okay. Now we go to the highwayman. What's his things? I guess I could just do this buff, right? I can give myself a buff for six turns. Unless there's someone you want to... Do we want to upgrade ourselves? No, we can't upgrade ourselves. Could we upgrade a skill? Yeah. I mean, is there somewhere we want to go that is going to be problems in the future? We don't want to remove a quirk. We want to remove a disease. So yeah, I think I am. I'm just going to give myself a six buff for next one. The Vestal, however... We have five. Is a, is a character upgrade worth it on the Vestal over here? What does that give us? Gives us a built-in dodge, immunities, a resistance to stun. Yeah, I think I am gonna upgrade the Vestal. So she's gonna go here. We're gonna spend four of our XP and four of our dollars. A, pray, a, a hefty price to pay for progress, you know, in the in the cool darkest dungeon voice. But she's now going to go to level two, which means we get to add another level. So we get to add, she gets an extra skill when we go into the next one. Awesome! You love to see it. Okay, Highwayman, sorry, you did you. All right, we now go to a new day. Where is the caretaker going? He's going on eight. You fucker! <laughs> you son of a bitch! You son of a gun. I wanted to use that. <laughs> All right. Crusader. 
I don't think we need to do a zealous, a zealous speech. What I would like to do... I suppose we could just gain another die for um, provisions. We also could go shopping to see if there's some sort of nomad style, like from the trinkets. Let me move these from the camera. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on my table. What's it to you? What's it to you? All right. So you can buy one of these for four, I think. When you hit a skill, plus one accuracy, crit plus two, a crit stone. I don't think I want any of those. I don't think any of them interest me for the build that we have here for this character. All right, the bounty hunter. What's the upgrade over here? <sighs> Is this guy really about damage? Let's look at his upgraded cards. So, Mark for Death just increases the accuracy and the buff on me. That's all it does. Sorry, this should be gone. I think a Come Hither could be good. I think I'm going to upgrade the Bounty Hunter. Because he is not, he's kind of like not our damage dealer. He's just there to kind of like, you know, you know. You get me. He's uh, he's kind of like our uh, um, our crowd control in a way, right? Like he's here to control the crowds, so to speak. Okay, so that cost us a bunch. It cost us four experience, but he is now level two, which is awesome. All right, the highwayman. You are going to go get that disease removed. We're going to spend two and get rid of our, our lethargy. Lethargy. We're no longer lethargic, which is good. And then the Vestal honestly kind of has everything the Vestal wants right now. I could go pay two to remove this one quirk, but I'm actually not too concerned by it. So I think... I think we're just going to do a chant. So it's going to reduce everyone's threat by one. And then we get a three turn buff for every character. So this will all carry over into the next one. Okay, now we go to the next day. Please don't take the blacksmith from me. Six, the graveyard. That's already closed anyway. Okay, so we have $25 left. I mean, I think realistically we want to, sorry, you should have one left. I think realistically, we would love to upgrade these guys next time. If I spend two of these, what? I mean, I'm going to assume you get three if you survive. <laughs> I'm going to assume you get three XP if you survive. Well, the Crusader's not going anywhere too special today. I think the Crusader's just going to give us a, a die at the cost of a gold. The Bounty Hunter, I think, is going to get... He's going to get a stress, and he's going to reveal a room in the next dungeon. So let me just, like, put this on that so I know that's a thing. The Highwayman... Sorry, we're on 
on day two. Two days left. The Highwayman, I think we're going to go into the Blacksmith. So we're going to spend a dollar, and we're going to upgrade one of our skills to level three. Sorry, oh, that's pistol shot. I was like, the tracking shot now deals nine from two to nine. That's insane. Hmm. This guy is our damage. No, maybe this was the wrong choice with this character. Maybe we just like put up the Grape Shot Blast to level three temporarily. It's not great, but it's what we're gonna do. All right, and the Vestal. I can upgrade a skill. Nope, don't have the XP. Don't have the XP! Um, I guess I'm just gonna like reveal three, right? Uh, plus two accuracy, one in that position. Accuracy plus one. Damage plus three. I think I'm good. Thanks, though, game. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Let's go to the dawn of the final day. 24 hours remain. All right. Let's see where he's going. Two. Oh, I would love to have gone to the survivalist. Okay, okay. Um... We want to send her here, I think. We want her to go to the blacksmith, because I think we want to get her just our healing up to maximum. Do I want to put up one of these attacks as my... I want to upgrade one of these guys' attacks, probably. Stud and blow ain't bad. Is that better than putting the tracking shot up? Probably, right? Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. We're gonna put the, uh, we're gonna spend two and we're gonna upgrade our Stunning Blow. Well, what about Inspiring Cry 3? It affects two players. I don't know if we have that many people where there's that many people in the same area. I can upgrade one that I'm not using as well. We've been very lucky that there hasn't been a lot of... Yeah, I think we'll just upgrade the Stunning Blow. There hasn't been a lot of like pushing and pulling which certainly makes uh, our own positioning much better, right? And they have had it, they've missed. Okay. How much health do you have? One, two, three, yeah. We're gonna move you to the sanitarium, I think, right? Do you wanna go anywhere? Maybe you'll go by, so we're gonna heal three. Just get you looking nice and good. And then you are gonna go shopping at the Nomad. Lead charm, accuracy. 
Oh, interesting. Scout without suffering any stress. I mean, that seems good. That does seem pretty good. Yeah, I'll do it. I think it costs four, right? I mean, we've had four days here, so like, there's no, there's no surprise that we are getting a crap ton of resources and stuff like that. Okay. And the last one, we're going to move here, spend a gold, down to 15. Um, we're going to upgrade our Divine Grace temporarily to level 3. I'm pretty sure anyway. Yeah, just heal 7 on baseline. That's, that's going to be... That's going to be pretty comparable to the damage that they're going to be dealing out. Okay. Well, that'll be it for this episode of Darkest Dungeon. That was a long Hamlet phase. But this does mean that for the next one, we're going up against a boss. We're going to be fighting the Necromancer himself. So fingers crossed. Wish me luck. And we'll see that on the next episode. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.